In this example problem, we're going to calculate the nominal flexural strength for the section shown here using the strain compatibility approach. And this is the same section that we analyzed in example problem two. So you can see it's a, a T-beam section with six half inch diameter strands and some of the material and section properties that we'll need in this example are, are summarized here. Our jacking stress, we're going to assume that we have a, a standard jacking stress equal to 75% of the ultimate strength, so 202.5 KSI. We're going to assume total pre-stress losses here of 35 KSI. Again, uh, if, if you're using the strength compa compatibility approach to calculate your flexural strength, typically you check your strength after you check your stresses, so you would have already calculated your pre-stress losses at this point, but uh, that 35 KSI, uh, you can calculate an exact value using um, either the PCI design handbook approach or the procedure provided in ASHDO LRFD. The uh, calculated concrete stiffness, we need that as well, so I'd calculate that for us here using uh, an ACI 318 equation. And our strand eccentricity, the distance between the center of the section and centroid of the strands equal to 9.8 inches here. Our first step is to calculate the locked in strain at the time of ultimate loading. And we'll need to calculate a few values here. The first is our effective pre-stress. So for this, we take our stress in the strand before, jet, or before release, 202.5 KSI, minus our total pre-stress losses, 35 KSI which will give us a, an effective pre-stress here of 167.5 KSI. Our effective strain, we can just take this stress, 167.5, divided by 28,500 KSI, the stiffness of our pre-stressing steel, to get a, an effective strain here of 0.00588. Next, we need to find our effective pre-stress force. For this, we just have our stress, 167.5 KSI, times our strand area, 0.918 square inches, which gives us a force here of 153.8 kips. We can use this then to find a decompression strain and this is a strain that's recommended uh, to be included in this approach by um, Dolan and Hamilton. It doesn't make a huge difference whether you include it or not, but I'm, I'm gonna show you how to find it here and include it uh, just for, uh, for completeness sake of the, for the example. So our epsilon D here, our decompression strain is going to be 153.8 kips divided by 360 our gross area times our concrete stiffness, 4,415 KSI, plus 153.8, uh, our strand eccentricity squared, 9.8 squared, divided by gross moment of inertia, 18,700 and six inches to the fourth, and again times our modulus 4,415 KSI. Look, gives us, gives us a strain here of 2.76 times 10 to the negative fourth. Our next step now is we need to iterate to solve for our pre-stressing strain at ultimate. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to assume an initial value for F sub PS. If we're doing this by hand, uh, a starting point of around 260 KSI is a, a good reasonable starting point. I set up an Excel sheet and then use goal seek. So I'm go going to use a, a good first guess in this example so we don't need to iterate. So anyway, the good first guess that I'll use is uh, F sub PS equal to 267.8 KSI. Our next step is to calculate the depth of the equivalent rectangular stress block 
based on our assumed F sub PS. We're going to assume here that our compression block falls in the top flange of our section. We'll need to check that after we calculate our, our compression block depth A. And use starting from equilibrium. We can set tension equal to compression because we have no externally applied axial forces. And then solve for A, our only unknown. And we'll get a, a compression block depth then equal to our strand area 0.918 square inches times our assumed stress 267.8 ksi divided by 0.85 times 6 ksi or concrete strength times 24 inches which is the width of our, our top flange the width of our compression block there and we'll get an A here equal to 2.01 inches. So you can see this is less than our top flange thickness of six inches. So we know that our, our top flange or our compression block does fall completely in our top flange. So we're okay there. Next we can find our neutral axis depth. So we just take our 2.01 divided by our beta 1.75 for six KSI concrete. And we'll get a C here of 2.68 inches. We can check our flexural strain then. And our flexural strain, plugging into this equation based on our strain diagram, uh, we'll have 0 0.003 times 20 inches minus 2.6. Eight, uh, our, our C value here, and then all divided by C 2.68, which will give us a, a flexural strain here of 0 0.0194. We need to add this flexural strain to our uh, strain from our pre-stressing and that decompression strain to get the total strain in the, the pre-stressing strands. So we can find uh, adding in our uh, epsilon p sub e and uh, epsilon sub d, we'll get a, a total strain in the strand equal to 0 0.0256. We can now use that strain that we found with whatever stress strain relationship we want to use. So we can use the uh, Ramberg Osgood expression or uh, the PCI design handbook approach. Uh, expression. So I'm going to use the, the equation that we find in the PCI design handbook and also recommended by Dolan Hamilton, which is uh, shown here when we have a, a strain. Uh, so when our epsilon PS is greater than um, 0 0.0086. Uh, so after we're, we're yielded, we can use the equation shown here and, and typically will be greater than that, that yield strain. So plugging in our, our values here, we can calculate our F sub PS is equal to 270 KSI minus 0.04 divided by our epsilon PS, which we found to be 0 0.00, or sorry, 0 0.0256 minus 0.007 which will give us an F FPS here of 267.8 KSI. We can compare this stress that we found, that we calculated, to our initial guess, and we can see here that they're equal. So we can stop there. We can now calculate our nominal moment using this uh, stress that we found. So our MN is going to be equal to our pre-stress area, 0.918 square inches times that stress that we just found, 267.8 times the lever arm between the centroid of our compression block and the centroid of our strands, 20 inches minus A over 2, 2.01 divided by 2. And here we'll find our MN equal to 4,000 671 kip inches.
So this is our nominal moment capacity. We can determine if our, if our section is tension controlled, compression controlled, or in the transition region by comparing the flexural strain that we found uh, using this approach with the tension controlled limit from ACI. So you can see here our, our tension control limit, as, as we've seen in this, this module, is the yield strain plus 0 0.003, where for pre-stress reinforcement, we can assume the yield strain is equal to 0 0.002. So our tension control limit is 0 0.005. So comparing our, our flexural strain, which we found to be 0 0.0194, to that 0 0.005, we see that uh, the flexural strain is greater than the tension control limit. So we'll have a phi factor equal to 0.9. Finding our factor nominal moment then, we take this 0.9 times MN, 4,671 kip inches. And we got a phi MN here equal to 4,204 kip inches. So this is our, our factored nominal moment. Finally, we can compare our results with the strain compatibility approach with the results that we got from example two using the rectangular stress block approach and our results from response 2000. So you can see here our nominal moments are within 5% or so. Our F sub PS is uh, again close to the response value. So closer to the response value than we had with the rectangular stress block and our uh, C is a, again a, a little higher but uh, still close to what we would get with the rectangular stress block or response 2000. Um, so you can see here it, again some of our, our analysis results from response 2000 showing us the compression block depth still in that top flange and then our, our moment curvature response which uh, gives us some idea about the ductility um, and performance of the section. So that concludes this example.